What's up, guys? On our way to, to our, our haunted ghost tour. <sighs> Happy Sweetest Day. Happy Sweetest Day. Some pumpkin that me and Daniel carved. <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> the pumpkin that we carved. Lunch before ghost hunting. I would make it. Not me. What? I ate one. You ready? Got our ghost meter. This um, we'll tell you there's a spirit nearby. <laughs> so right now it is supposed to be at zero. It is at zero. <laughs> we'll tell you guys when it's at, uh, I think it was broken. It is? I was on the show My Ghost Story at the Geography Channel a few years back. Also did an episode of the Fox News here for an investigation we did at a place called the Country House Restaurant, which is in Clarendon Hills. Anybody ever see the old uh, um, Amityville horror movie? Yeah. I always think this house reminds me of that because the yeah, windows look up sure. there, they look just like they did yeah. in that house. Yeah. But yeah, this is the house. This is the picture. I'll pass it around. Now, when this picture was taken back in 2014, the house was under some light construction. It was completely dark. No one was living here. Uh, there were no lights on in the house. I don't think there was any electricity even running through the house. But if you see this picture here, the lady was standing in the driveway there. She was taking a picture of that window. Around. See if you see anything in the window there. You can make it bigger if you need to. Two of them on and one off. And then I'll ask if there's any spirits here, if you could turn off the light that's on or uh, put the, the light that's off on. Do you always find the same stuff? Oh, I can put a black iron. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, if there's any spirits here, can you turn off either of the lights that's on? There's a red one on that side, silver one over here, black one in the middle. That one's off. If you could turn that one on or turn the other two off. All the way off. It's like flickering. Everybody getting to see that picture? Is it still going around somewhere? Do you see what we saw in that picture? Like images in the windows? The lights in the windows? the silver one can you turn that one off it's close it's like it's almost off it was much brighter earlier yeah it was so that black one doesn't know anything unless ryan's here yeah. where that house sits was where the original cemetery for naperville was and this was a very small tiny farming community that was their first little cemetery right there Pete. Pete, like twice. You hear that? Pete. No, it's not Steve. Pete. No, no, it's Pete. Mm -hmm. Who's Pete? Uh, Manny. Manny. Manny? Did you live in this house at one time? Anybody here like to hold it? Volunteer? No. Can I? <laughs> Come on up. <laughs> I think it asked if you're drunk. Oh my god, yeah, I've been drinking. <laughs> it, that was the first thing I heard when you came up here. It said, is, is she drunk? 
<laughs> well, she's been drinking, but I, I don't know. I think she's okay. <laughs> What's your name? Christina. Christina? Mm -hmm. Something you'd like to say to Christina? <laughs> I thought it said you're pretty. <laughs> and then a yeah. I don't know, did you hear that? Yeah. I thought I heard that too. Mm -hmm. Hey, I'll fight that girl. See a mind that she's been drinking? <laughs> Can't make that out. You have anything you'd like to ask? Um, are you a friendly spirit? <laughs> Didn't answer. <laughs> she wanted to know if you're a friendly spirit. Mm -hmm. Are they gonna answer that question? <laughs> Anything else you'd like to tell Christina? Oh wow, mine is. Holy crap. Like everyone. I know, everybody's going off. Yeah, but oh, I think yeah. everybody's going off. Alright, one second, please. Bring it up here, buddy. Oh, it's here. Like, you know it's you. Now, uh... The tree roots should all be under here, so there shouldn't be any electricity. But uh, it's not. Uh, now I can't say. That, I mean, some people told me this town in Naperville Cemetery, which is up walking the street. He digs up his wife and a cradles her in his arms, and he puts her in that wheelbarrow, and he pushes her back across the town and brings her back home. Props her up at the kitchen table and gets out one of those bananas from the fruit basket and peels it and goes to feed it to her, you know, like we would normally eat a banana. But he quickly realizes that she can't eat that banana that way anymore. But he believes in his heart that he's got to find a way to get that banana down her. Because he thinks when she eats it, she's going to come back to life and be back with him. So what he does is he puts it in a bowl, takes a spoon, and he smashes it down into a nice fine paste. And he spoon feeds it to his wife, kind of holding her neck back like this and getting it all the way down her throat. He does manage to get that whole smashed banana down her that night. In his mind, he believes she's showing signs of like coming back to life. Signs of uh, like movement, the color coming back to her face. Thinks she could probably use a couple more feedings. Also believes that she could use a good night's rest in her bed upstairs. So he grabs her to take her upstairs. And now he's not the young strong man he used to be. And she's put on a few pounds herself. So as he's taking her up the stairs, he's kind of very clumsily banging her head against the wall and feet against the railings. But he does manage to get her up there and get her in bed, spends a night with her that night. Next morning, he repeats that process. Again, uh, as he's bringing her down the stairs, very clumsily banging his head, her head against the wall and feet against the railings. But he does get her downstairs and sits her at the kitchen table again and smashes down another banana and feeds it to her. Again, he's more convinced that she's showing signs of coming back to life. This goes on for two days till one of the kids come over to pay their father a visit and there's their dead mother sitting at the kitchen table. Or she's returned and reburied in Naperville Cemetery. They send him to that nice institution with the rubber walls for psychological evaluation. Now they say in that legend that whoever's lived in this house since that time would experience, like paranormal-wise, the sound of something very clumsily coming up and down the stairs. But now that's the legend. Now the true story, which I think is even better than the legend. Uh, there's a lot of similarities between the legend and the true story. The house was built in the year 1870. It was a wedding present from David Hillgas to his son Charles and his wife Sarah on their wedding day. They did live here for a number of years, raised kids, kids grew up, went off on their own. The year 1898, the wife Sarah dies. 
Now, Charles did love his wife very, very much. He was very saddened and grief-stricken by his loss. He couldn't imagine living without her, going on without her. But now he kind of fancied himself as a bit of a chemist. He liked to play with these chemical concoctions. Initially, his goals with those were that if you, you drank it, it would like maybe give you a little more energy, kind of restore vitality to life. But he thought one day that maybe he could take that all a step further. He thought maybe he could make it a potion that could restore life. When he had that potion, all he had to do was go get his wife, bring her back here, give that to her, and she'd come back to life and be back with him, and then he wouldn't be alone anymore. So whenever he had a potion he was feeling good about to experiment, they had some chickens out in the back. He'd go out back and get a chicken, bring that chicken inside, grab that chicken by the neck and hit it on the head with a hammer to kill it. He'd go get that potion. And to make that potion go down a little bit smoother, he would smash some bananas down in a bowl, drizzle the potion over it, and spoon feed it to the chicken. Now his whole thought process with that was that even if it doesn't bring that chicken back to life that night, it's not going to be a total waste because he could just <clears throat> he could just save that chicken and eat it for dinner some night. So whenever he had a potion, he's feeling good about it. Go out back, get a chicken, bring the chicken inside, bonk it on the head with the hammer to kill it, and go get that potion, smash the bananas down the bowl, drizzle it over it, feed it to the chicken. But for the most part, time and time again, all he kept coming up with was chicken dinner. Till one day. He had this potion he's feeling really, really good about. He's like, I can feel it in my bones. I know this one has to work. So it goes out back, gets a chicken, bring it inside, hits it on the head with a hammer to kill it, go get that potion, mashes the bananas down the bowl, drizzles the potion over it, spoon feeds it to the chicken. That night, within about a minute or so of that chicken finishing that whole smashed banana potion mixture, that chicken kind of springs back up to life and starts cackling around. And now Charles is all excited. He kind of jumps up in the air and he's like, Eureka, I did it. I finally invented a potion that can restore life. Now all I have to do is go get my wife, bring her back here, I think that's your phone. Um, and I'll give this to her and she'll come back to life and be back with me and I won't have to be alone anymore. So again, he waits till after midnight or so or that when the town dies down some. He gets out his shovel and lantern and wheelbarrow, walks across town to Naperville Cemetery, which is up Washington Street, digs up his wife, grabs her, cradles her in his arms, puts her in that wheelbarrow, pushes her back through the town and brings her back home. Props her up at the kitchen table and goes get that potion that worked on the chicken, smashes the bananas down in the bowl, drizzles a potion over it, spoon feeds it to his wife, gets that whole smashed banana potion mixture down her that night. Again in his mind, he believes she's showing signs of coming back to life, the color coming back to her face, like subtle signs of movement. Believes she could use a couple more feedings, also thinks she could really use a good night's rest in their bed upstairs, so he grabs her to take her upstairs and put her in bed. He spends the night with her that night. Next morning, repeating that process, bringing her back downstairs, smashing more bananas down, drizzling the potion over it, feeding it to her. <clears throat> this goes on every day for two weeks. At the end of the two weeks, he's convinced that she's about ready to come back to life at any moment. And again, one of the kids come over to pay their father a visit, and there's their dead mother sitting at the kitchen table. He's feeding her this smashed banana potion mixture. Of course, she's returned and reburied in Naperville Cemetery. They send him to a nice institution with the rubber walls for psychological evaluation where they do find him sane and he eventually works his way back to town. But now where that legend and that true story greatly differ. And that legend, it sounded like when he was feeding his wife the smashed bananas, that that happened within like a few days of her death or at least like a few days of her burial. But in the actual true story, when he finally had that potion he believed worked on that chicken, and he probably didn't hit that particular chicken hard enough on the head that night to kill it. He probably just knocked it out and that's what brought it back to life. But when he finally had that potion he thought brought that chicken back to life, that actually happened 18 years after his wife had been dead. Hmm. So he was feeding this 18-year-old corpse that smashed banana potion mixture, totally convinced that she was about ready to come back to life at any moment. Then they found him sane. That light. Right, that was the end of our amazing ghost tour. It was really, really good. What'd you think? I liked it. Uh, a lot of great stories. Yes. There were kind of like, um, they give you chills. I did get some pictures, of some orbs. Yes. <laughs> Interesting. I will post. Yes, you will. I know it's one after one o'clock. Yep. And I'm tired. We did a lot of walking, but it was so fun. and very very interesting highly recommend it yes check out some ghost tours yes pretty fun <laughs> all right guys we'll see you in our next video
Peace. Peace.